Hello everyone, my name is Sister Eleanor. I'm a member of the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans and I'd like to welcome you to our Vesper prayer today. Hopefully everybody had a lovely day today. I understand it's slightly warm there over in the UK and we had a pleasant day here <clears throat> so far in Philadelphia. So as usual, we'd like to start our broadcast and our prayer time with a prayer for peace and our candle lit for peace. So if you want to light a candle with us, that would be lovely. This is a, a little beeswax candle that I have lit here for peace as an offering to God. And our prayer is, if anyone speaks ill of you, praise them always. If anyone injures you, serve them nicely. If anyone persecutes you, help them in all possible ways. You will attain immense strength. You will control anger and pride. You will enjoy peace, poise, and serenity. You will become divine. And that is from Swami Sivananda, if I pronounce that correctly. So, let us now continue with our Vesper prayer, our evening prayers of today. And today we have two saints, or two men, that we'd like to commemorate today. One is St. Louis the Ninth, and one is St. Joseph Calasans. St. Louis the Ninth was actually a king of France in the 13th century. He became king at the age of 13, a lot of responsibility for a young man. Throughout his reign, he defended justice and promoted peace. He organized the court of the king, which had regular reviews of feudal cases. He pri prioritized um, the poor, founding many hospitals and charitable organizations, and he loved architecture and supported the work of the Sorbonne University and Saint-Chapelle, known for its architectural complexity and stained glass. Now, St. Joseph Calasanz was born in Aragon, Spain, in the 16th century. He did well in school, became a lawyer, and also had a degree in theology. After the death of his mother and brother, he became ordained and held many ecclesiastical offices. At 35, he moved to Rome and discovered many orphaned and abandoned children and started a free school for them, no matter what their faith, what their wealth, or their cultural heritage was. So we see these two men of different backgrounds who did wonderful things and became who God wanted them to be. So that's why we commemorate them today. They were people who lived according to their convictions and saw a need and responded to that need. So may they both pray for us today so that we can do the same have the courage of our convictions, stay true to our values, stay true to our heart, basically, and be all that God has called us to be. So now let's pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us through our prayer today. O oh God, come to our assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to your Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now our poem for the, for the day is uh, a poem that was written by Breach, if I'm not, if I'm pronouncing it right, O'Hare and Marie Cox. And Breach O'Hare is a, a, um, a nun who is a poor Claire nun. And Marie Cox is a uh, mercy nun. Come, come to me, all you whose hearts are weary. Come, come to me, and I will give you rest. Come, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly. Take my yoke upon you, and your soul will be at rest. Now let us pray Psalm 30. Psalm 30 is a thanksgiving for deliverance from death. 
and as I said, you know, a lot of these were written by um, David, who was a king and always probably had somebody after him to, to kill him, and so he probably was delivered from death many times. But hopefully um, all of us are not in that um, condition where we are delivered actually from death. Even though many of us have been near death, maybe due to sickness or whatever else, and we have been delivered from that death. But as I said, every day we have little deaths that we undergo, little transitions in our lives, and God saves us from those little deaths, helps us through these transitions. And so we're always grateful for God who does that for us. Every single day of our lives, we undergo transition. We never stay the same. We grow every single day in every way. So we thank God for that, for keeping us along the right path and for helping us along the way and for helping us through these little deaths and sometimes these big circumstances as well. So let's pray then. The antiphon is, I cried to you, Lord, and you healed me. I will praise you forever. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, I cry to you for help, and you, my God, have healed me. O Lord, you have raised my soul from the dead and restored me to life from those who sink into the grave. Sing psalms to the Lord, you who love him. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts but a moment, his favor throughout life. At night there are tears, but joy comes with the dawn. I said to myself in my good fortune, nothing will ever disturb me. Your favor had set me on a mountain fastness. Then you hid your face, and I was put to confusion. To you, Lord, I cried, to my God I made appeal. What profit would my death be, my going to the grave? Can dust give you praise or proclaim your truth? The Lord listened and had pity. The Lord came to my help. For me you have changed my mourning into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. So my soul sings psalms to you unceasingly. O Lord my God, I will thank you forever. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus our Teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God, our Father and Mother, glorious in giving life, and even more glorious in restoring it. When his last night on earth came, your Son shed tears of blood, but dawn brought incomparable gladness. Do not turn away from us, or we shall fall back into dust, but rather turn our mourning into joy by raising us up with Christ. And the antiphon again is, I cried to you, Lord, and you healed me, and I will praise you forever. And we thank God for all of the healings that he has given us throughout our life. life. Sometimes God does turn his face, or you feel he turns his face away from you, but it's only a lot of times to get your attention and to reroute you to focus on the larger things of life, which are love, God, of course, first, faith, trust, all of these things, the simple things of life, but the most profound things of life. Sometimes we lose our way and sometimes we need more than a nudge to get us back. So we thank God for all of that. And now let's pray Psalm 32, which is they are happy whose sins are forgiven. So all of us are happy whose sins are forgiven. All of us are happy who, when the Lord looks kindly upon us and changes our direction and leads us from death to life. The antiphon is, the one who is sinless in the eyes of God is blessed indeed. Happy the man whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Oh, happy the man to whom <coughs> excuse me, the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. I kept it secret, 
and my frame was wasted. I groaned all the day long, for night and day your hand was heavy upon me. Indeed, my strength was dried up, as by the summer's heat. But now I have acknowledged my sins, and my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offense to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. So, let every man pray to you in the time of need. The floods of water may reach high, but him they shall not reach. You are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will give you counsel with my eye upon you. Be not like horse and mule, unintelligent, needing a bridle and bit, else they will not approach you. Many sorrows have the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving mercy surrounds him. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, exalt all of you just. O oh, come and ring out your joy, all you who are upright of heart. Glory to our Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus, our Teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You desired, Lord, to keep us, keep from us your indignation, and so you did not spare Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our sins. We are your prodigal children, but confessing our sin, we come back to you. Embrace us that we may rejoice in your mercy, together with Christ, who is your beloved Son. And the Antiphon again, the one who is sinless in the eyes of God is blessed indeed. And now let's pray a song or a canticle from Revelation, which speaks of the judgment of God. And the judgment of God is nothing to really be feared. We ju God judges us every day. He points out to us our faults, and he points them out to us so that we can make that adjustment with his grace to get back on track, to get back on the path of life. So this is what God does for us every day, judges us every day, points out to us every day where we are at fault, where maybe we have kind of had our, our thinking a little bit construed. So let us then praise God for his judgment on us. The antiphon is, the Father Mother God has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship. All people will obey him. We praise you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was. You have assumed your great power in our lives and have become your reign. The nations have raged in anger, and then came your day of wrath, and the moment to judge all that was dead in us, the time to reward your servants, the prophets, and the holy ones who revere you, the great and the small alike. Now have your saving grace and power come into our lives, and the reign of our God in our lives, and the authority of his anointed one. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, the evil who night and day accuse them before God. They defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony of truth. Love for life did not deter them from any sort of death. So rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell therein, and rejoice all of us here today. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Father, Mother, God has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship. All people will obey him. And now let us listen to what Peter has to say to us. There is cause for rejoicing here. You may for a time have to suffer the distress of many trials, but this is so that your faith, which is more precious than the passing splendor of fire-tried gold, may by its genuineness lead to praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ appears. Although you have never seen him, you love him, 
and without seeing you now believe in him, and rejoice with inexpressible joy, touched with glory, because you are achieving faith's goal, which is your salvation. Our response is, the Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. The Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. Honey from the rock to our heart's content, and bread of the finest wheat. Glory to our Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord has given us food, bread of the finest wheat. And now in this beautiful day, going into the evening tide, let us pray with Mary her song. The antiphon is, God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up all the lowly. So let's say with her, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who revere him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, and he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He fills the hungry daily with good things, and the rich he sends away empty-handed. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promises of mercy, the promises he made to our fathers and mothers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to our Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. Now, dear ones, let's pray for one another now and praise God for all of his blessings. Our hope is in God who gives us help every day. Let us call upon him and say, look kindly on your children, Lord. Lord our God, you made an eternal covenant with all of your people. Keep us ever mindful of your mighty deeds. Look kindly on your children, Lord. Let all of your ordained ministers of every faith tradition grow towards perfect love and preserve all of us in unity by the bond of peace. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. Be with us in our work of building the earthly city, that in building we may not labor in vain. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. Send workers out into your vineyard and glorify your name amongst all nations. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. Welcome into the company of your saints, our relatives and benefactors who have died. May we share their happiness as well one day. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. Lord, I ask you for us always to live in the present moment. Uh, as I heard a preacher say yesterday, not in the past or in the future, but our grace and, our, and the goodness of God is here and now. As the psalm, I believe, says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. So let's try to live in the present moment. As so many faith traditions, especially Buddhist traditions and, and Hindu traditions, teach us to live in the here and the now. May we all do that and rejoice in each minute and in each hour. And we say, look kindly on your children, Lord. We pray for you, Brother Sean, and for Brother Rob, who's visiting his family, that he may be safe and sound and get back safe and sound. 
and for Brother Murray and Brother Paul, who I believe are going to the monastery and probably there already in Scotland, the Buddhist monastery there. So we ask that the Lord bless all of you and your work at the monastery at Storth. Give you peace and rest. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. With Brother Sean, we hold all of our Italian brothers and sisters living in the earthquake zone, trusting that more will be found safe and well. And our hearts go out, especially, I know that you were there, Brother Sean, at Assisi, who is in the same place that the earthquake happened. And so we, we pray for all of those people there. We have a special connection to that place. It's a beautiful place. We ask that they all be safe and well. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. With Sister Sue, we pray for myself and Elizabeth. And in turn, we also pray for you, Sister Sue, for you and your family, and for blessings on you, rich, rich blessings this day. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. With Brother Sean, we pray for all of those living through the floods in Louisiana that help is forthcoming for them. And it's a shame because they have to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild, it seems, the people in Louisiana. So we pray for them to have fortitude, for them to have faith in God, for them to see the goodness out of such tragedy that always the Lord brings about. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. We pray for all of you not logged in, that God may richly bless each and every one of you this day this evening and into tomorrow and the rest of your lives, you and your families and your friends. Look kindly on your children, Lord. We hold myself and Elizabeth to continue to let your Franciscan joy shine through. And we praise and thank God for all joy and we pray for all of us to have joy, Franciscan joy every day of our lives. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. With Brother Sean, we pray for all that are living in fear. Lord, bless them. We pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. For Brother Sean, we pray for Brother Harry, who is struggling today. We ask the Lord to just break through to Brother Harry and to bless him and to clear his mind and his heart and his body and everything, to clear it out so that he may think clearly and be all that he has, God has called him to be. And we pray, look kindly on your children, Lord. We pray for the end of his struggling, Lord. We pray for peace in all of our lives, Lord. With Brother Sean, we pray for Sister Nancy, who is in the middle of packing to re relocate from New Mexico to Mexico. Well, blessings on her. What a beautiful area, New Mexico. And I'm sure the Mexican area that she is relocating to is also as beautiful. It's just a special place there too. I've never been there, but I've seen so many pictures and would love to go there one day. So we say look kindly on your children, Lord, and especially for Sister Nancy today. Bless our, our earth, Lord. Bless all the people of our earth. Bless all the species of our earth, especially those who at this time might be um, a species that is in danger. So we ask you to restore Earth Mother and to bless her and help us to take care of her the way we should. And we pray, look kindly on your children, dear Lord. And now together, let us offer God the silence of our hearts. Let us just simply be still and know that God is God. So let's do that now for just a few seconds. We praise and thank you, God, for your goodness, and we say, look kindly on your children, Lord, and we ask you to always make a space for stillness and quiet in our lives and silence where we can listen to your voice, and we thank you for that, Lord. And now together as a family, as a true family of God in love, let us pray the Our Father, Mother God together. So let's begin, and please say it with me. 
Our Father, Mother God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear Father, Mother, God, you illuminate the night and bring the dawn to scatter darkness. Let us pass this night in safety, free from all evil, and rise when morning comes to give you again thanks and praise and to celebrate a new day. We ask this through our Lord, who is the cosmic Christ, and who is your Son and our brother and teacher, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. May the Lord truly bless each and every one of us here today. And may St. Louis, St. Louis, and St. John Calistance, St. Joseph, I think, Calistance, I've already forgotten his name, God forbid. May they also pray for us today and protect us from every evil and bring us to the fullness of life. Amen. Our final blessing is this. The world before me is restored in beauty. The world behind me is restored in beauty. The world above me is restored in beauty. All things around me are restored in beauty. It is finished in beauty. Our lives are done in beauty. The beauty of our Lord, the beauty of our God, and the beauty of the Divine Father, Mother God. Amen. So thank you so much for being here today and for praying with me and for praying with us. And we pray that you will be with us again tomorrow. So thank you again and namaste.